Good morning. Today we have uh, our meeting with Dr. Elena Paley. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Elena. Uh, please tell us about yourself. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to Miami, Florida. It's already hot this morning. And um, actually, uh, our subject, main subject, is Alzheimer's disease. And my background is uh, my education. It's a master's degree in bio biology with specialization in biochemistry, uh, PhD in uh, molecular biology, cell biology. I speak Russian and I speak English. And uh, thanks Dr. Diana Pelli who helped me today to talk about our projects. So this is general shortly. I work in different universities in, uh, in Russia, in Israel, in Tel Aviv University, in USA, in University of Miami, in uh, Northwestern University in Chicago, in uh, Nova University, in Brandeis University. So now I work as expert Biomed Incorporated, Floridian company for profit in another company in Florida. Uh, stop Alzheimer, it's a non profit. Stop Alzheimer. So, this is the main subject. We want to stop Alzheimer. Um, we know that you've been studying Alzheimer's disease for many years, and there's a particular uh, discovery that you would like to present to us. Could you tell us a little bit about that? So discovery or something new in this field, uh, I believe that it's really discovered, uh, discovered because uh, there is a pattern. We have a pattern, particularly I am the inventor in that pattern. Uh, the pattern or invention is about the small molecular, natural molecule that can induce different manifestation related to Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases. The common in many neurodegenerative diseases is uh, cell death and this small natural molecule induced cell death. Okay, um, can you tell us how it's implemented in our regular life? What are you trying to achieve with your discovery? I would like first to detect, to be able to detect this molecule uh, and uh, related molecules, uh, detect in the part of human like samples, human samples, I mean of everybody. Samples I mean non-invasive. So we focus on non-invasive samples. What it means? It means, for example, stool samples or stool or feces. feces. This is most simple because nobody needs this part. It's actually it's non-invasive and practically it's a, even environmental. Okay, so uh, basically, you're trying to say that the molecule could be found in excrements of a human body, and what does that signify? It, this molecule can be found, find, found it, or can be found, or it is found. So there are some publications demonstrated that we do have this molecule in our bodily fluids and it could be found in human feces or human stool. Uh, it's not mu much publication, it's not a diagnostic test, but uh, the data exist that we do have. And actually, obviously, uh, the, uh, currently and before, people thought that we have a very minor amount of this uh, molecule that could be neurotoxic, but in few papers, the most recent papers and earlier papers, it's just few and it's not really easy to find these publications. So majority of people don't care about this molecule because it's not known for the white public. 
So I believe that the majority of people in this uh, that could hear me, they just absolutely don't know about this. This is why I'm here to tell you about this. I just want to inform public. Human, they have a neurotoxic molecule that can induce neurodegeneration, and in the certain circumstances, circumstances it can induce death. So it could be deadly toxic. Okay. Largely ignored by clinician. Sorry. Uh, okay, so let's just uh, let me let me rephrase this. So you f think that the molecule that you found in human specimens, right? Uh, if the human if the person has this molecule, so they have a higher risk of getting Alzheimer's, is that what you're saying? I think that the uh this person or human, uh, they have a high risk of Alzheimer and probably other neurodegenerative disease that link to Alzheimer. For example, it could be Parkinson's disease and uh, it could be some other diseases related to cell death. Okay. So in your project, you're trying to <clears throat> bring the awareness to other people or you're trying to create treatment or diagnosis where what is your passion what are you trying to achieve i would like to achieve everything that you mentioned so awareness to, to inform public about the possibility even of sudden death there are some conditions of people that cause sudden death so the reason is not no, why the person suddenly died. Mm -hmm. And I can uh, figure out because the amount of neurotoxin is very high and the person, for example, uh, have, have some medication that increased or some diet that increased the content of this neurotoxin. So people should know about this. And can, can come to our company, both non-profit or profit, and to ask what to do. Actually, we can discuss this, what specifically we can do to stop this. This is why we created the company, actually, that calls Stop Alzheimer. So this is one of the way to stop. So you ask me, what is the second? Yes, to make a test, test. It's not always a diagnostic test, it's actually a test for prevention. Because if the level, of the person can be healthy, but if the level of this toxin high, uh, the disease in the process of development. So actually, Alzheimer disease is a uh, by, uh, disease, this disease of aging. It means so it can be developed for years, years, years. So this is why we have to know this in advance. So it's not just strictly diagnostic test. It's a test that includes goal of prevention, so mainly prevention. And you ask me if it's possible to treat. I believe it's possible, basic on this model, it's possible to develop treatment through this company. Because we developed this project, we have initial patent, and we have so much knowledge, like I said, uh, mentioned a lot of references, there's probably nobody in the world, trust me, nobody else work on this project in that specific focus and so much details. That's very interesting. So um, it sounds like a, it's a very life-saving project that what you have. So did you um, try to get support from the government services to get this project funded? Actually, I'm doing, I think that this is uh, actually absolutely normal, logical way to go to National Institute of Health, NH, to go to NH with the project considering that Alzheimer disease cost $220 billion annually to government, I mean to USA government. So this is why I'm coming directly to government and not just I say something, no, I'm writing a grant proposal according to specific, very specific forms. If they will out of this form, I mean this proposal, they will not be even accepted for consideration. But surprisingly, uh, NH didn't jump yet on this project. Not yet, but we hope it will, because this is direct 
goal and aim and reason for existence of Institute of Aging, of a National Institute of Health, to take in consideration our project. Especially, we cannot discuss in the small, uh, small business uh, grant proposal that have a very limited volume to discuss each aspect, each details, considering that only a references list is like, I told you, more than 150 uh, papers different kind related that way or another way with this project. So from what you're saying, I understand that you still working on getting the funding, but while you're waiting for the funding and you're fighting to get more support from government and from private investors, are you continuing your work? Do you feel that it's that important that in spite of lack of funding, you're still continuing to further your project? Very good question. So I'm working on this because I believe in this project. I'm absolutely sure that this is project is correct because I did preliminary experiment that mostly published in uh, peer-reviewed journal. So the journal that's not uh, like uh, New York Times, it's a scientific journal with reviewers. So it means I had professional review. Uh, some papers published, for example, in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and in Neuromolecular Medicine and more. And I believe in this project. Otherwise, I will not sit here, not spend your time and my time to talk about nothing, like blah, 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 blah. No, I'm talking about very specific project that I believe. This is why, despite of lack of funding, I'm looking for collaboration, different kind of progression, to make progress in the project, including paperwork, uh, not to stop this project, even without NH funding. And you ask me if somebody else can fund, for example, some private entity. NH has a unique opportunity to invite professional reviewers, and nobody else can afford this, because NH has a right and opportunity to invite the best possible reviewers. And I think this is the key questions, key opportunity, and a key problem in the NIH funding system. Okay, <clears throat> that's very interesting. Um, also, I would like to maybe spread our topic a little bit further. I understand that you have another topic that you worked, which is in relation to what we were discussing, which is probably more commercial, and um, possibly you'll be able to talk about more about your monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies that you have, and maybe the private investors would be more interested in that. It's more commercially ready, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have monoclonal antibodies that can detect specific manifestation in the brain in brain of Alzheimer patients, and um, but unfortunately post-mortem brain. This is why we're more focused on uh, non-invasive. But uh, the project with the non-invasive samples probably looks too simple for reviewers. It's just like this, okay, take stool and detect. It's just give us something more sophisticated. Monoclonal antibody are really more sophisticated and they belong. The most important, they belong to our company. They never been sold. This is very important in commercial commercialization of product. Since monoclonal antibody never been in the market, they could not be sequenced. The sequence, uh, protein sequence or gene sequence cannot be detected. We only people who have only company that own this monoclonal antibody that could be used, uh, I believe, both for diagnostic tests, for just histological detection, and also as a monoclonal uh, antibody therapy. Therapy of different conditions that can be related to Alzheimer's disease and not, not only. That's very interesting. So for our viewers, do you have the information how they can contact you if they're interested to hear more and to learn more about your 
studies and how they can get involved. So how? I think that uh, we can be contacted uh, through <coughs> online uh, registration of our company and all different social networks like YouTube, Facebook, you can find everything. It's Dr. Elena Paley and uh, co-founder of Stop Alzheimer, Dr. George Perry of University of Texas at San Antonio. So please, just even if you just write your comment to this uh, presentation, to this video, even this way, you can uh, reach me. Thank you so much. This was very interesting presentation and we hope we we'll can continue it with the response from our viewers and we'll answer all the questions from Elena Paley in the future. Thank you.